Okay, so while we're waiting, uh, thanks again to all the sponsors for this uh, couple of days' events. Obviously, we can't have these events all without the kind of donations that we get from the sponsors. So, once again, please make sure that you, uh, you say your thanks to those. This is the title slide. I think we're pretty much ready to go. So, can we get started? So, the, I think the final session of the day, why are we waiting? My name is Neil Hambly. I'm a sort of database architect. Um, I also do a bit of consulting on the side uh, when I feel uh, the need to do a bit more secret outside my normal running hours. We're going to be covering uh, the sort of internals of weight stats analysis, weights and cues, and we're going to be go going through some of the key concepts with that. And we're going to look at the agenda now for this session. So, quick bio slide for those who don't know me. Well, you can set that up back. That's my best photograph. <laughs> it has been painted with uh, Photoshop, either. I do look like that, kind of. Um, I've been doing this for a long time, about sort of 13, 14, 15 years as a sort of SQL professional. I've done many roles, DBA developer, and sort of do some architecture stuff now. But really, that means that I get kind of to, to work with multiple teams in my organization, and that's the DBAs, that's the BI guys. So I get to sort of, you know, do the fun stuff as well. Um, right at the bottom of the corner, um, where my email and blog, this will be available. But I also run the London Past Chapter. I've recently taken that on, and I've been doing music groups in the UK for a while. I do love speaking and come to these events, and I kind of type myself around the, the world doing this type of stuff. So that's enough on the bio. Sorry about you know, scaring you guys. So this is why we're here really today um, for this session is we're going to look up you know, a little bit about the weights and cues methodology and why it's a very useful tool in order to find performance problems inside SQL Server. And we're going to cover some of the background and additional stuff to start with. Just sort of lay the, uh, the framework for what we're going to cover later in the session. We're going to look at the types of weights that exist. There's a couple of different categories of weights there. We're going to go through anatomy and identify the different weight types. And we'll do some demos and I'll try and explain some of the uh, weight types that exist and where you can find further information on some of the weight types that exist in your system. And then we'll just finish off with a uh, sort of summary and QA. So let's jump into the, the main sort of uh, start of the session. No, just took a drink. So the weights and cues basically came into existence really in the 2005 SQL Server days. And it actually did exist kind of before that in SQL 2000, and it was DBCC SQL Perf weight stats. And it had a sort of limited number of weight stats. There was lots of uh, weights that were kind of, you know, bucketed together in terms of what the weights were. And really the, the sort of existence of weights and cues methodology really came in existence in 2005. So that's where we're going to focus on today. And it's run through the 2008-2012 edition. As you can see from the listing here, we have a huge number of weights now that exist, weight types that exist in SQL Server. We're up to nearly 650 at the moment. So, you know, when SQL 2005 came, we had about 200, so we've more than tripled the number of weight types. And what that means really is the granularity of finding the weights and where the sort of the, the points in the code are actually sort of waiting for a process to be complete or waiting for a resource to become available. We're able to identify those with much higher granularity than we were before. So you can see here, really, 2005, 2002, 2008 was, was a huge jump. And primarily that was because if you don't know SQL Server, it's cooperative scheduling, which means it sort of handles how it schedules with our resources inside SQL Server. And it's kind of like plays very nicely with the other resources. And it's cooperative, so it will do its cycles. Say so I'll have a bit of time here and I'll go off. Windows the OS is what's called preemptive. So we also have SQL Server running as a service on our Windows OS. What that means is that we have weights that exist inside SQL Server that are cooperative ones. And there's also the preemptive weights, and this is the 2008 um, additions where it's gone from 202 to 484. We've basically been able to explain those in much more detail and split them out into the individual types of weights that existed there. R2 came along, we had a couple more new ones, and 
how early 2012, we've got all the news of always on or how to start that's really come on in, the, in, in the terms of the weights that we can see there. If you've never seen the Weights and Cues white paper, right at the top there, I do have a link for it, I'll show you quickly. I do recommend if you're going to do any weight stats analysis, you do spend a, a, a little bit of time reading that. It's about 100 pages, but it's a, it's a fascinating read to understand the, the concept that came about and how weights are tracked inside a single server. And you'll find this has been predominantly used more and more by internal resources in order to find where the problem of performance bottlenecks exist. And from there, we can then find how to resolve and get our systems running quicker. And that's what this is all about. How can we get more effective use of our secret service? So today, we're only going to really concentrate on the weights side of the weights of Q's methodology. We, we could do the Q stuff as well, but we need the next couple of hours. And I've got other sessions I'm really planning to do that. So jumping over to really give you a categorization of weights. So, the main one we're going to look at today is right at the top here, it's called the resource weights. And this is the internal I'm waiting for a lot to be assigned on a specific object to the server. I want that data page to be brought into memory from disk. These are the type of weights that we're going to really describe a lot and looking at. There are internal operations that are kind of used in what we call queue weights. This is background operations, your service broker processes and other weights that exist inside a single server that we're constantly kind of polling like the deadlock monitor, etc. So we're not going to look at those too detailed, but be aware that there's other weights that are being tracked inside a single server and they really fall into the queue weights. Again, um, let me just try and sort of show you a bit, a bit higher. It's basically background tasks and deadlock monitor and other such ones like the, the ghost cleanup operation, for example, where that's hitting certain pages. So you'll see high numbers and high counts against those weight types. I'm going to explain some of those in a little bit. And the third one, there at the bottom, this is the sort of preemptive weights. This is outside SQL Server. This is where the, the preemptive weights really fall into this category. This is external pressure on SQL Server and processes where we've handed off that task to SQL, the Windows OS, and we're waiting for a response or some process to come back to SQL Server at that time. And that's really where the weights there. Exist. On the right hand side here, you'll notice I've listed out some weight categories. And really what that is, is just giving some characteristics to the type of weight. So we have obviously buffer I.O. type weights where we're, we're looking at sort of the, the weights that exist when um, using buffer memory, etc. There's also things like the login and the, for example, the rights to the transaction log and that type of stuff. So when we look at some of the reporting that's available natively inside SQL Server, You'll find that kind of they fall into these categories. It doesn't have a complete kind of matrix overview of everything that exists, but a lot of these are covered. I think actually only 265 of the most common weights are actually categorized, but we have over 650, so uh, in that so you see there's quite a bit of a you know a disparity there. And obviously, we don't really have the external weights, the 190 external weights categorized there either. So that's kind of giving you the, the types of weights that exist and kind of characteristics of those weights that we have there. Now, this is where it gets a little bit more technical, we're sort of going up to 200 levels of stuff now. The weights itself is, is tracked by some internal DMVs, and we're going to be looking at the key one called SysDMOS weight stats. And this weight stat, uh, this DMV, effectively tracks an instance-wide level of the weights that occurred since the last start of SQL Server, or since you've actually performed a clearance operation, which you can see here with the code here, SQL, BBC, SQL per OS weight stats clear. There's also one for latch weight stats, and you could also clear that specific DMV as well, if you were having the synchronization, or we'll talk about that a little bit coming up. So weights is the kind of the key 650 of them. There's 179, if I remember rightly, latch weights. That's a very advanced topic, we're not going to go into much detail, it's like a 400 level plus topic. But what this really gives you is, you can actually get a, what's happened inside my SQL Server instance so far, what weights have occurred, what breakdown and categorization have occurred, and that's since the last clearance for, you know, uh, start of SQL Server. But if you've got weights that are currently executing, and currently sort of processes that are running down, and you wanted to understand 
what those weight types were. We also had two other DMVs that we can use. And we have the first one there, and I will explain this in a little bit more detail shortly, is the OS weighting tasks. So this basically lists all the tasks that are basically are waiting on a resource at this point in time, and it explains the, re the, the weight type that we're waiting for, and the elapsed time that we've got for it as well. And we're going to look at some examples of that. And the runnable queue, and we're just going to come on to that very shortly in the next slide, is basically once we've had a wait time occur, a resource that basically was, we were waiting for, once that resource is available, we go into what's known as the runnable queue, and we're purely waiting then to be assigned our CPU cycle uh, yeah, assignment. We do have other resources where we can look at the you know, information about wait types, and the, the key ones really there, there are some others that extended events, so this is the profiling mechanism that we have inside SQL Server to look at the, you know, the operations of what's actually happening and find you know, internal sort of information around that. And there's lots of um, use of external events and I'm going to show you that for wait types. Daily Collector is a, a new uh, feature that came in 2008 the server. And this was allowing you to basically collect uh, snapshots of information around that 15 second threshold to get key information and create a management reporting collection of those stats and give you a reporting interface. And we're going to quickly have a look at that shortly as well. Uh, before this dashboard, that's an older type of kind of pre-management data where daily collector one. There's before data dashboards for 2008 and 2005. I think there's a 2012 one as well. And they have nice reporting weight stats information. And again, we're going to go into some examples of that shortly. As I said, right at the beginning, we did have some kind of weight stats for 2000, and the only thing you can really do is, is to look at the secret birth weight stats, and it will give you some numbers. I never really used it myself in 2000, I didn't really know it even existed. It wasn't until I started looking at these in 2005, around about 2008, um, was predominantly when I started using this more heavily. As we said earlier, we can't cover everything today, although I speak really fast, as you noticed. But I'm not going to cover queues predominantly, and there's also performance counters like the SIS DMOS performance counters, and also performance counters, where you can get information around some of the, the sort of you know stats of what's happening in the system and what you're waiting for. So we're not, you know, the queue side rather, what's actually being queued up. So we're not going to look at that too much today. Well, we're not going to cover it at all actually. So. This is, uh, I'll just let you kind of sort of bring that into, into view while I take a drink. This is the key DMV that we're talking about today. And this is a very simple table, it's a, or DMV. It's got five columns, and basically we have, it's categorized by the weight type, so we have 649 entries at the moment. And you'll see that there's, there's basically four metrics. There's a counter. There's a wait time in milliseconds, so this is an incremental number, quite a, a large one. There's a maximum wait time, so that's the, that's the number that that wait type is high, ever reached as high as its count has got to. Um, and there's also what's known as signal wait, and we're going to cover that in a little bit more detail. Basically, that's the amount of time we've been waiting for the process to get onto a uh, CPU cycle. Now, this is um, probably one of the reasons why you might want to do a weight stats analysis. So let's take a, a sort of example of, you've got SQL Server, you've got some processes running. If you were spending 30% of your time waiting for resources, that effectively means your system's only 70% effective. You're, you're wasting those 30% of the time. So if it took, for example, 100 seconds to run, you're going to be waiting for 30 seconds in that 100 second time frame. 30 seconds waiting for some, for some uh, combination of wait types. That's not really very good, but what we need to do is be able to understand what the percentage of waits in terms of the waiting state occurs for any process, and when we find the high ones in the, of that process, we can go and work on those to resolve the bottlenecks that exist, and actually then basically reduce the amount of waiting time to a smaller percentage, and by doing so, we can then do more processing with our SQL Server in a certain given time frame, which means we can do more batches per second, transactions, etc., etc. So this is really where we're trying to get.
get the top level, this weight set, to, as small as possible. And again, we don't really want to be waiting on the vulnerable queue for very late long. I'll, I'll show a better example of this. But this is where we want to spend most of our time. So we have you know, 90 plus percent of our time in here. That's pretty good, but we want to be like 95, 96, 97 percent. We want these two at the top to be as small as possible. So the weight stats analysis that we're going to do is really to identify how much percentage of time is spent here and what those weight types are and we can go and look at those and figure out how to reduce those numbers to make our total percentage of effective processing on our single server as high as possible or higher than possible here currently is on your systems. This is, uh, I put this in specifically this specific example because it's in the, um, the Wakes uh, and Q's white paper and you can go and look at this and, and spend a bit more time. So I'm um, just going to run it through very quickly, kind of the scenario. So we're going to have Wakes occur in SQL Server. <coughs> There's Wakes occurring all the time in SQL Server, if, if you didn't know that. What we're trying to do is to find out which one resources we have those Wakes on and why do we have that Wakes occurring. So this is a quick example of the three states that you would exist inside your SQL Server. You can have a runner state, which is the stuff that's actually executing on your CPU quantums. You've got four millisecond quantums for CPU. And that's the instructions that are physically running on the CPU at that time. If you hit a resource that's not available, so you have like a, a certain page that you want to perform an operation on, you need to read that in, and it's not in buffer at the moment, you're going to maybe have to go to disk, pick up that page, AK page, and read it in. So you're going to, at that point, you're going to have a wait type that's going to be associated with bring that in. You're going to have to wait for that resource to go out, the storage engine to go out, pick up the file, and read it into memory. And that's going to take a few milliseconds or maybe longer um, to do. So when that happens, the running queue, basically, the one that's on the run, effectively goes and stops that point and goes into the waiting list, which is all the resource waits, the one we were talking about earlier. <coughs> this is really what we're tracking here. And you can see here we've got some examples of a SPID um, 56 is CX packet. I'll uh, see if I can just spin that in a bit. Yeah. So maybe you'll see that a bit better. So here we've got an example where SPID 56 is a parallelized uh, query, and we're running that, and we've actually hit a CH packet. So one of the threads is still trying to process while the others have uh, finished. So we're going to record the wait on all those completed threads, what the CH packet wait time is. So that's actually waiting for something to finish. So this gives you an example of what can be going into the waiting state, the resource waits. Once we finish that resource wait, the resource waits are completed, uh, we've got that memory and object, for example. We can then go into the run queue. So we can go back onto the scheduler sort of you know, listing. And this is what's also the signal weight. And basically, what we would do, and there was an example here, is we'll come to the bottom of this queue. This is the first in, first out queue effort. So basically, you, know, you have a resource, you need to do something, it will put it into the waiting list. You have to wait for that resource to fail, and when it is, you go into the bottom of the run queue, and you work your way up that stack. So hopefully this will give you a slightly better example. So this is basically walking through. We had split 60 the uh, I/O completion. This is the, the buffer read or write, uh, buffer read rather, and it's going to go to the, to the waiting list. Now that's only order. It's not like a first and first out. That's just a list of waiting resources. When that resource is, is completed, as we say, available. We can then go to the bottom of the queue, and then we move our way up the queue to the very top. Once we're at the top of the queue, we then get put onto the next CPU schedule that's available. Now, in order to find what's in the runnable queue and also the waiting list, we have two other DMVs, as we said earlier. We have the current wait list, which is the waiting task. We have the runnable queue, which is the exact request. And we can join these together with some of our in the uh, queries that we have, or we can go out to the internet and actually pick up a load of already pre written DMVs that are excellent out there that will give us the key information that we want to see. And we're going to look at some examples of those. Now, this is kind of like um, 
my, my way of trying to do art and it didn't work out very well. Basically, we want to make that green cob, the process and the active, I'm doing work here, as big as possible. We want to keep those other cobs as small as possible, the way to be them. But they will kind of cycle into each other. You can't go from running to waiting back to running. It needs to go back through the running, runnable queue as well. And the runnable queue, as I said earlier, this is known as the signal weights. And purely all we're doing is we're waiting for a CPU cycle to become available for us at this point. Okay, so this is kind of the, the, the more complicated bit that people find. They can understand how to schedule up sort of operational works, they can understand the track and weights by certain types. But when you look at those weight types, they kind of, some of those things do kind of spring out to you and they make real sense. They kind of, you know, write off, for example, I think that's right into the log. It's kind of like obvious what it's going to be. But some of the other ones is kind of, you know, not as, you know, basically probably as explainable and there's not probably as much information you can go and research and find information about the weight types out there. But also there's a lot of those which we, we talked about earlier that would like the background, the Q weights. And these are the ones that really are constantly running in the background. They're like the internal sort of, you know, mo um, cogs in motion inside SQL Server that are doing the background work of SQL Server. And you probably don't want to have these in your visibility when you're doing weight stats analysis. So we can do weight, uh, weight stat queries and we can actually just kind of like uh, ignore these ones. And I have a list of them. And it may change from system to system. These are quite common ones you'll see often excluded. And they're kind of the ones which are, is you've got a lot of broken ones, which are the service broken, the internal mechanisms that actually kind of spin up all the time, just looking for things to do. The deadlock monitor is another one, etc. On the left hand side, though, these are the ones we're really interested in. And this is again, I've kind of given it a bit of categorization and given you some examples of. Not here. So, I'm going to throw a question out here, and those in the front, you're not allowed to answer. The CPU one, so SOS underscore scheduler underscore yield. Has anyone heard of this one before? Okay. So, guy in green, so, you, you've seen that one before? Yes, when someone has no index and you have a hash join, then sometimes you have SOS scheduler yield, and you need to make some index and Blow up, take a, I don't know, nested blocks operator. Okay, so good answer. So it's basically explaining that, that we've got a heavy intensive CPU operation that's running, like an index rebuild, for example. And what we're looking off is this is actually called the scheduler yielding to, to basically give a nice balanced workload in terms of CPU usage across all the processes that are in. So SOS is SQL OS, so SQL has its own OS, it does its own buffer and file management, the thread stack uh, management, and this is called the SQL OS, it's quite an advanced topic, um, actually does a nice pre-con on this, and it's, it's kind of ones that, that people, you don't need to delve too deep into, just be aware that this is how SQL sort of does its resource um, arrangements and, and does the scheduling of everything. So the schedule yield is effectively just counting the times of when it yields to another process to allow that to have a, a kind of a go on the CPU cycles. And ones like the, uh, the page IO latch and the latch ones, these are probably a little bit more advanced, but these effectively are the non-buffer memory synchronization, very um, frequently low um, heavy resource latches that are put on in memory buffers. So whenever you do anything in a single server, you're effectively protecting that memory structure with this buffer. Sometimes we can find that we actually have um, problems with our latches. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of, um, kind of analysis on, on latches as well, but we won't go into that too much. But that's really kind of the, the common types of ones that you will see raised probably to the top of your top weight. So we're going to do a, a weight stat to kind of top 20 uh, uh, view in a minute. Another one is my blocking, for example, is you will see um, these locks being applied, the exclusive, etc., uh, etc. Et You'll see these come and go very, very quickly, especially in this, inside the, the weighting tasks. You'll see them sort of come and disappear, and 
these are really just showing you the way types of how much blocking is, how much contention effectively you've got on a single server object inside your order. So if these are really, really high, you might find that you need to look at your strategy for your isolation models, or you might be looking at version in your data uh, with snapshot isolation, for example. I had a question earlier today, actually, on link servers at OLDB. This is the wake type that we, we sometimes see when we're using DTC, we're using external access to other servers like an AS400 or an Oracle system, or even a slower sort of SQL 2000, and you put a data in. You may find that it's using an OLDB driver, um, and it's trapped into this SQL uh, link servers entry here. There's obviously the ex external, the preemptive ones we talked about, which is the kind of the Windows OS um, doing some operation like uh, writing out some, some files or allocating some more space on disk, for example. And these are common ones you can see. The top one there, right at the top, is CX Packet. This is very commonly misunderstood. And I'm not going to go into too much detail because we just don't have time. But if you see CX, CX Packet, as a weight type, it's a high weight type in terms of your categorization. It doesn't necessarily mean that you've got problems with Allison. What it means possibly you might have uh, stats issues or you may have your matched off settings maybe at a, a, you know, a value that possibly isn't optimal for your system. And you would go and establish where inside SQL Server the actual CX packet weights are being generated from. You look at the query plans, look at the distribution of threads to see if some are skewed, for example, because the way um, you have a coordinated thread for a CX packet, and then it has you know, two or more threads uh, with that, and it will then try and assign the same amount of, sort of you know, resource load to each of those threads. And if that's not sort of kind of balanced, you're going to get these resource threads, because one thread's going to finish very quickly, and others have maybe got ten times the amount of data to process. Um, but it thought it was balanced, but it's not, and this is where the CX packet weights kind of accumulate from. And the more threads, the more high the, the grid Patterson uh, operation number you have. Effectively, this number kind of sort of you know, skews up even further because it's catching the amount of time it's waiting for each of the threads for, uh, for the, this final thread to complete. Now, people have asked me before, where do I find information about um, you know, which weights to, to ignore? And there's a, there's a fantastic sort of procedure out there um, called SD, uh, who is active, Adam Mechanics, and he's constantly revolving this all the time. But what you can do is use a couple of the, and I'll just jump in here to give you a bit of a better view. You can basically use a couple of these parameters here. It's all documented on his site. But what that will do is give you, and I've highlighted the list in there, as you see, they've got very, very high numbers associated with some of these. And what that really is, is that's told me that this is the kind of background processes. Um, I've looked at these, I've looked these weight types up as well, I kind of realised that they are background processes. So I've used those weight type by value to exclude from my analysis so they don't bumble to the top and push the real weights that I'm interested in looking at further down and outside of my, my vision. Uh, so that's a, that's a quick way of looking at, but there's lots of information on the uh, internet as well, as they say. Um, but this is a good one of quickly figuring out what re background weights exist in your system, or Q weights as we can sometimes call them. So you probably heard me pass one quite a lot. Uh, I'm going to jump into a couple of demos now and kind of show you the, um, some of the methods of, of looking at the DMVs and also some of the, uh, like some events ways we can capture DMV uh, um, information and for the succession or between deltas to actually look at what's happening in a certain time frame or for a succession. Does this all make sense so far? Anyone got any questions at this point? Excellent. That means they have a clue what I'm talking about. All right, let's uh, jump over. So we're going to Management Studio. Um, what I'm going to do is, is give a quick shout out to, to Glenn Berry. Um, he does a, an excellent DMV diagnostic uh, DMV queries. Um, and one of his in there, I'm going to show you that shortly, is looking at the 
a West Wave stats and doing a kind of a top weight stats since the last clearance or since last week sort of started and breaking that out by just really a, a sort of descending order of how much in the percentage terms SQL Server has waited for this to happen. So we're going to connect and let's wait for that connection to come up. My machine's been asleep for a while, I think, but I'll submit to the SQL Server. Okay. And I'll just run a query there. So let me just uh, highlight this query and run it. Put that into hide mode. Okay, so this is running now. Now, I haven't really uh, had this machine on for very long recently, so it's kind of doesn't have a great deal of information. So let me just um, basically give you a, a breakdown here of all of the weights inside SQL Server. So this is kind of generally what you would see. Um, I was filtering it for a certain percentage. But what we're seeing here, let me say, probably jump in with the example here, is we've got a percentage here of, let's try that again, sure. That's better. So what we've got here, we've got a running percentage. This is the sort of, the number of weights that are kind of accumulated in terms of either wait time, or you could do this by a count and set how many how many instances of these weights actually occurred in my SQL Server. Generally, I tend to go with the wait time because we're talking about reducing the amount of wait in terms of time across the system. It may have a high dependence on, on weights occurring, but if they've got a really small um, sort of wait time associated with them, they, they kind of even tuning in that to not really give you a, a great deal of return on investment. So I, I concentrate on wait time here, and you can see here that we've got a, this is in milliseconds, it's an accumulated total of the weights that occurred. These numbers are really low, by the way. You see them sort of, you know, a few more decimal points uh, added to this. The ones that tend to be right at the top of your um, list in here are the ones that really the ones that you might want to go and investigate as to why you're getting that volume of weights accumulated for that weight type. Uh, let me just pick an example here, though the weight type is not great. We've got synchronous network I.O. Now, again, some people have a misunderstanding as to exactly what this is for. But this predominantly is the way so you probably see in your top 10 or top 20. And really what it means is we've actually needed to transmit data from SQL Server to a client application, maybe Management Studio. It's a really cool use of, uh, you'll see this with queries that you run against Management Studio. It's moving data across to an application and it's the, it's the time it takes really to, to, to do that. And if your application is doing like a road by your road processing type um, approach to the data, it's going to kind of accumulate some wait time in this synchronous network I.O. while that, that transmits occurring. And then when it's finished, it kind of stops again. So we've obviously had a couple of queries run here, and we've had 633 um, milliseconds of data accumulated, well that might be seconds, I can't remember the calculation, I've done that. But it, it's very, very low, it's only 0.04% of the whole example here, of the whole weights of time in the SQL Server. So I don't really need to, to, to worry too much about it, which is why I took the, the clause off earlier, because if you look at those top two, they're predominantly 98% of all weights in the SQL Server, is our weight accumulated in the SQL Server. So, Clearly, we need to concentrate on those two because the others really don't generate too much weight um, in this case. And if you're clearing your weight stats and you're doing the DBC SQL Perf clearance, you're going to kind of need to wait for this to, to kind of build up a little bit to see where the, you'll see them kind of differ and change in terms of the, the ordering. But what you want to do is at least run, um, do your clearance. Let your process run, take a snapshot of the data at that point, and then go and look to see which weights have occurred. There's a better way, because this is instance wide. This is over every process to run the SQL Server. So unless you block everybody else out, and you're the only thing that's running on SQL Server, you're going to kind of get a skewed view of how much resource weights were occurring from just that process you're trying to troubleshoot. 
So we have the use of external events in SQL 2008 above, and we can specify the specific sessions that, that we only want the weights to be tracked against. And that's a great way for us to actually just go and see exactly which weights have occurred specifically for the session that we're talking about. So I'm just going to quickly show you now the, um, there's a couple of ways of doing the, this information, the, this example. But this is probably one of the common ones here, is we're able to use Excel events. And if you've not seen Excel events before, it's something you may want to start looking into. Um, we don't have time to cover that everything, but I'll do an example here. Is specifically here, I'm, I'm specifying the SPID. I'm specifying the, the SPID 53 here. So if I had a process and I could look that up with SPU is active or SPU2 or whatever it was, I could look at the top of my query and see which SPID I'm running on. I could specify that in and that's a session to start running to track the web stats, both external and internal, that exist. And it's really quite simple, because all we're doing here is we're using the event type called weight underscore info, and there's also one for the external um, as well, which is underscore external. And I'm basically going to create this and put this into a specific file. Now, what I have shown you here is the old 2008 syntax that also required a metadata file. The 2012 has, has done away with the XEM uh, extensions. And then once we've got this configured, I can then start that session up. It's already, uh, I haven't created it well, so let's start that up. So what I've done is I've created a, a, a new event, extended event session, that's going to, cut, to monitor the weights on speed number 53, and it's going to capture the weight info, and it's got info information, put it into this file, and we can analyze that data. Once I've uh, run some queries that would have demoed the, the SPID number 53, and I've kind of done this earlier, is what I can do is start then kind of, um, it looks a bit messy, but you, know, you can basically just you know, use the script and, and, and do it for your own purposes, is you can then read that data from the file using the XE file, target read file um, function, Read it into a, a, a structure, internal structure, say all event data, temporary table here, and then do a very simple example here of understanding, and I, I don't think I've created the table, so let's just do that now. So this is, this is kind of like one way to very quickly go, okay, I'm going to look at what the re waiting resource is for, and you would have a list in here. I've, I've, I haven't run a query to, to generate some data here. Um, I didn't have time to, to knock that up. I do have it at home, and it will be on my blog. But what I wanted to show you is probably um, what I think is a, kind of a, a nice way of using weights inside SQL Server. We're interested in probably the top 10 weights, but also we're probably interested in, in weights that have gone, what were the top 10 weights now? And 10 seconds later, what were the top weights now? And kind of tracking the top weights that go sort of exist in each of those sessions. In SQL 2012, we've had a very nice new sort of procedure added with SP underscore diagnostic, uh, server underscore diagnostic. I'm going to quickly just jump to the top here, here, and just show you an example of this. Get the uh, person in the right place. Just take a, a, about five seconds to run. What this basically does is it goes and pulls some internal information and collects some key information around the state of SQL Server at that point in time. And you can see here we've got five um, sort of listings of information here. And you can't really see it that well. Um, I'll see if I can scroll in a bit. Yeah. You can see here that we have them broken out by system, resource, print, or processing, IO subsystem events. Now, the one I'm going to be interested in for this specific example is the query and tool processing. Because what it has is a fantastic set of top 10 weights by counter and by duration for both preemptive and non preemptive. So you've basically got four counts of 10 top 10 weights there for both the preemptive and non preemptive weights. And we can actually then track that through deltas. And I've written a, a bit of a query. I've got a, a blog post on this as well, by the way. I'm just going to show you the query that we, uh, we put together. It's very simple. So 
all I'm doing is I'm creating a, an internal structure, a temporary structure here in Tempe B. And it's just really uh, building the deep, um, the same structure that we would have from, from the view. And what I'm then doing is I'm going to insert the data into this table. And I might do this ad hoc, I might sort of put some data in, it's got a timestamp number on it so I can see how long it is between deltas. But if I wanted to do this, say, at a 10 second frequency, every 10 seconds, go and collect me this data set. So I can do some trends in, for example, of um, you know, the top weights that were occurring and some other key information that we might want to know what the CPU usage was at the time, did we have any memory pressure, notifications, there's lots of information, it can capture all of this. There's a, a feature called repeat interval, underscore interval, that exists for that. Unfortunately, it doesn't work when you try and use it with insert. And it's kind of like that was really annoying when I found that. And about five minutes later, I found a way around it, which is really clever. So this gives you just an example of, of the data. And let me just quickly jump in and show you um, an example of one of those. Uh, so, so here we were saying about the top 10 weights, and there's, there's, there's four categories here. So what we have here is by counter and by duration, and this is for the non preemptive so This is the internal SQL Server ones. And if you look at the, some of the weight types, you've got write log, I don't know why I put it there because it doesn't work. You've got write log, you've got IO completion, you've got thread pool, you've got very common ones that you will see constantly there. So that was what the top 10 weights were inside from SQL uh, DNOS weight stats at that point in time for the time when we took them. And we have some average and um, um, maximum wait times as well. And we have also um, it by the preemptive external. So these are the kind of ones which are the preemptive OS um, ones that you would probably see waiting for a single object. That's basically kind of uh, ones that you would obviously see generally probably raised at the top of your preemptive. I generally don't look at this too much because there's not as much you can do to, to resolve these. You might find that you need to put your instant file initialization, for example, set it on. It also that you, you're growing your files much quicker, and this kind of finds those type of problems. But what I wanted to do was to show you um, an example here of if I run this with this frequency, and I've just seen what I can find it here, with an interval. So if I take that and create a new entry here, and I'm going to run that. So what that's going to do now is every 10 seconds it's going to basically do this information. But Extended Events has a very nice feature which allows us to capture that information. And we go back to here. Because if you look here, we have, and I'll just do that again. We have an event type called SQL SPN SQL Server for Diagnostic Component Resource Result. And this basically captures the output of that interval operation that we're running. And we can put that into a file and we can do some manipulation of those deltas. And this is effectively what I've done. Again, this is all on my blog. But what I've done is create the top 10 uh, sort of uh, table with top weights on it and just a you know, CTE example that basically runs a query that does the analysis of, I also need to create the table first. So what we're doing here is we're going to <coughs> find the weights that are occurring that are being imported into that file. So Excel of events is, is capturing this every 10 seconds and writing the results out to a file. And we're analyzing that file to find where our weight type, the number of weights that occurred in that 10 second frequency. So you can see here an example of I had 20 weights that occurred in a 10 second frequency. I had another 20. This all might automatically tell you that that's doing every half second, that's doing a, a check to see um, and it's counted against those weights. What you probably be finding is, is if you have, for example, very high numbers on, for example, right lock. Right lock. If you were having issues with your transaction log performance, you'd probably see these numbers factor into the write log weight. It'd be a, a high counter, 
and it would be a high number of average weight type and, and maximum weight type. And that would give you that, that sort of, here, here's some sort of key information here, go and look at performance from my trans transactional log. Because as we all know, the transactional log really is one of the key performance bottlenecks inside SQL Server. If that's not performing very well, SQL Server is not going to perform very, very quickly. So this is kind of another example of collecting data, doing some delta, understanding where your, your resources are being used and which way type is, is encountered. There's probably the key thing you want to take away from the session is go and look at your DMOS weight stats, go and look at what top weights are, and kind of you know, see if you understand what a weight type is. And there's lots of resources out there, you can just you know, bingle it and put it in the weight type and come back with some information on that. If you don't understand that weight type, you can send me an email and I'll see if I can explain it in maybe a bit more, you know, because it may be an exotic one that, you, that is kind of unique to your environment. Jumping back to, so that, that's that example there, I do have a, um, the, uh, if I can find it, I kind of lost the entry there. Well, let me, let me bring it up here before I add an entry already. So, we spoke earlier about the other ways of finding information. So you've got the internal DMVs, but you know, looking at that kind of gives you only a certain level of information. Graphing is probably a good way to actually see where the weight types exist in and actually have that categorization. So very um, usefully, we have inside SQL Server, we have a couple of things that are going to help us. We have the data collection. So if you've enabled this on 2008, some people have, some people haven't, but if you have, this gives you a great deal of information. One of the reports here that you can jump into is the server activity report. And really this gives you a kind of a quick snapshot, high level <coughs> overview of the key resources that are being used inside SQL Server. And if you run this report, it takes a few seconds to run, depends on the size of your NEW database. But it gives you a kind of um, quick heads up, so if you've not seen this before, you're able to drill in and drill out in terms of the granularity of this. But this gives you kind of weight stats, quick overview as to which of my weights, is it a lot type weight, is it memory? And what you can even do is drill into those further as well and get a breakdown by the categorization. This is the 17 categories we talked about. I don't have a great deal of information on my environment here. I've pretty much not run anything today on it um, due to uh, other reasons um, that we were talking about is mainly drink related and um, so I have a hangover. Um, buff IO, latch, so this kind of gives you a quick counter. Again, you've got a sort of wait time in terms of percentage and the cumulative wait time. So very, very quickly, a couple of clicks with your report, you get a really heads up quick thing you can give to your management or speak with your other teams and say, hey look, we're seeing something here, that's uncommon, Let's go and look into it. If you wanted to then look into what those specific details of that, cap, of that category were, which weight type specifically we're talking about, you could just click on the drill and down, it jumps straight in. You obviously need to have this name. But all this is doing is collecting that 15 second intervals um, and really giving you that sort of heads up information. So if you are having performance problems, this has a small overhead of running this, this MD data collection, but it gives you a kind of a a good, cool piece of information. What we can do is we can see by drilling down here what type of so synchronous network I own. I can even filter this. I can see how many weights have occurred, what the sample information, what the wait time associated with that was, etc., etc. So you can see very quickly we can do you know a two or three minute drill down into a report and get this key information. There are other flavors of reporting. Um, this is not the only one. This is the Weights and Cues white paper, by the way. Um, it's kind of 2005, um, but it's very, very relevant today. So this is the example. Let me just uh, scroll this back a little bit. This is that example I was giving you. The reason I put that in my slide deck is because you can download this white paper and get a better explanation than I did you earlier of exactly what the states and, and steps were involved here. And it explains it fully. Um, I should have just read that out really, but I didn't. But it does have the weights of this and weight types. And it gives you 
some of the examples towards the end of some of the percentages you might see. These are going to vary from system to system. Your mileage will vary, as they say. But, but if you kind of use this to just go and hone in and find out, do I have an I.O. type bottleneck? Is it a CPU bottleneck? Is it a CPU, is it a sort of um, a latching type problem on your site? Once you know where your kind of type of categorization of bottleneck is, you can go and look at trying to resolve that. And that's what weight stats analysis is all about. So I'm just going to jump back to, actually I've got a, a slide that um, comes up. If you wanted to know, by the way, um, this is a great DMV I use a lot, that's why I was speaking to Joe on this the other day. Basically, um, this is SQL uh, skills. You can just put, um, in, if you run that query here that you can see on the screen there, that will give you your current waiting type resource. It gives you a lot of information, it gives you even the links to, uh, to look at the amount of resources and the plan, so you can go to the query plan and find out if you've maybe got like, you know, some inefficient query plan type there that's causing the wait in the first place. So this is a really good, useful one. And this was a, um, a quick example of the performance dashboard. Again, you can see that kind of categorization, nice drill down into, it doesn't show very well because it's a PDF, and I don't have it installed on this machine. So we're pretty much done with uh, that. Let me just jump back into session. This is always the good bit. So we covered, and I did do the example of SP who's active, um, but basically you can run that query and it will show you with some parameters what the predominant weight types, and it actually can break it out into which weights are associated, whether you've got CH packet weights, it will show you all the various sort of weights associated with each of the threads. If you don't use that SP, go and look at it, and look at it, SP who's active, go read about it, it's fantastic, you will find a lot of information in there that will help you solve your performance problems. Using other resources that are available to look at query plans and stuff, these are, these are great, you, the, you can go and look for those like SQL Sentry's Free Plan Explorer. Using Extended Vector, you've got 2008. If you're not familiar with XQuery, that's kind of a little bit more of an advanced uh, approach to it, but you can use some of the reporting with the MDW. Data Collector, we've just shown the examples of those reports. There's another one um, on the Complex site, which is the RTA uh, using Extended Vector, and that does that kind of breakdown again very similar to what we've done. Um, I don't really have any load on my server, so there's no point really showing you it because it's just been an empty report here. So, obviously, if you've got any questions, I can kind of try and answer them now, and uh, we'll try and wrap up the session in a little bit. Um, obviously, again, thanks to the sponsors and stuff. So, if you've got questions, please put your hand up. Um, there was not one question. Amazing. So, did you understand anything of what I said this afternoon? Don't put that hand up. Not a thing. Oh, no, you don't understand anything. Yeah, and, yeah. So, if you do have questions about extending, uh, about wait stats, if you've got even questions about extending events or kind of, I've got this wait time, I don't really know, I'm trying to find some information, feel free to email me. I do love the wait type stuff. Um, there's some great resources. I do have a past session. Um, that you can go and look at, this was the, the past summit, what we did, I did weight stats on there, and I did a lot of demos in that, and that you can actually, uh, if you're part of the past organisation, you can go and look at that online, and view that one. So, again, a final thanks to the, uh, to the sponsors for the event, um, it's been fantastic coming into your country and speaking, um, hopefully you've taken a little bit away from the session today, and even if it's just going to have a look at what's in your uh, your web stats queries, and thank you very much.